If you've never been formally welcomed to traditional Blackfoot territory, welcome. Kanai High School, this is our story. It's an opportunity of uh, student success stories, a place where students can gain knowledge and opportunity. It's an opportunity for students to understand who they are as a First Nation Blackfoot person from our community. It also gives an opportunity for them to empower, empower and gain resilience to their own spirit. The students will also face experiences of failed uh, experiences. Um, they will also, f childhood trauma. They will also find opportunities where they will face adversity at times in their life at a young age in life. Three initiatives that I wanted to talk about this, this afternoon. One is our collab collaborative movement, our trauma-informed school, and our mentor, Elders Mentor Program. Our um, collaborative movement. In our school, we, are, we have the opportunity to build a wellness initiative that gives the students an opportunity every morning where they're able to walk for 30 minutes every morning, get themselves prepared to learn, to be focused, in their daily academic journey. They also get the opportunity to um, get a free breakfast and a free hot lunch. Uh, the students also get to, um, uh, they're, they're a part of the agriculture program. This past spring, uh, a handful of our students built a barn behind our high school. And with them, getting the opportunity to feel that they are someone in building that barn gives our chance to give the students the opportunity to find therapy, to, to be connected, to find trustworthiness through animals, horses, calves, cows. So it gives them that opportunity. Um, we also offer dual credit. Students gain the opportunity to already get college or university credit as they move forward. Um, the second initiative is our Brain Story certification course. And in general, our high school is a trauma-informed school. So two years ago, our staff took part in the course. Every Wednesdays during our PLC time, we would meet, we would collaborate, and get a better understanding of who we are through the neuroscience of the structure, the serve and return, executive function, but at the same time, we're able to relay this into their daily curriculum. So uh, we, 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 we embodied it with our um, First Nation culture, with our needs it to be values, and through that, they were, we, we were able to um, find, find and seek ways of um, collaborating and building with our way of life and the neuroscience, putting it together and offering our students um, some curriculum that will empower them as they move forward. The last initiative I wanted to talk about is our men elder mentor program. Um, our students had a vision. And in that vision, they wanted to build a TP-like structure in one of our classrooms. And in the classroom, uh, the TP structure was there. There's other artifacts in there. And as they did, as we were coming up with the structure, um, the elders were a part of it. And once it was all done and complete, uh, the TP was there. They come in 
and they're able to get a better understanding of our Blackfoot traditions and customs. So that way, when we celebrate our annual Akugatsen or our Sundance during the summertime, they won't feel afraid or they won't feel um, shy or anything. They're able to understand what our customs are. So through that, our elders get a chance to storytell to the students. They, they get a chance to relate their stories within their grandparents or grandmothers, grandfathers. They can connect that way. So it's very empowering to our students to get that initial contact of, we, of who we are as Blackfoot. So again, those are three initiatives that I truly wanted to put out to, to you and, and everyone else on who we are as Kanai High School. Thank you. The reality of our community is that our, our children, our grandchildren, are suffering from the effects of what my late older brother Narcissus Blood would call unresolved historical trauma, such as colonization, being put on small reserves, our traditional ways of life being taken away, being put in Indian residential schools where our language was forbidden. Charlton and I are both survivors, one of the last generation of Indian residential school survivors. And even though our children at Kaina High School have not attended Indian residential schools, they are dealing with um, parents and grandparents who have those unresolved traumas from their experiences at residential schools. So we're dealing with the history. Um, we have a serious opioid crisis that our community is dealing with. Children coming to school, where school is probably the safest place for them right now. Our suicide rates are very high. <clears throat> I lost my daughter to suicide in 2006, so I know what it's like to go through that trauma. And because Charlton and I, and many of our staff members are from the community, we know what the issues are. The answers to all of our, the things we have to deal with come from within. We know what we're dealing with. All of the administrators within Kainai Board of Education have, are first of all from the community. Second of all, the majority of us have graduate degrees, uh, really, real, real strong leaders in education. And one of the things that I found in, that has helped me personally is coming to know who I am. And how do we do that? by acknowledging that our ancestors have been here since time immemorial. We know the land. We are connected to the land. Our songs, our ceremonies, our way of life, our language is embedded in this land that we call Genes Ksakhkoi, or Siksikei Tsitapi. is our tribe's constitution. This year, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of this elders' declaration of who we are. Ganaisin tells the world who we are as Gana, but also it tells our young people who we are. So it's a document that back in the day, 30 years ago, when the majority of our, our people spoke Blackfoot language, we didn't really have to have this, but today we do, and that's what we teach our children. I'm so grateful for the many opportunities that, that I've had as an ed educator to work with our children. Uh, we've done so many uh, amazing things with our children, such as taking them on trips, for example. Uh, we've taken students to the Toronto Raptors game in Toronto, 
Uh, we fundraised and the whole community came, came together and we took a group of kids, middle school kids, to Disneyland. And just last year, Charlton and I worked really hard to get about 25, 30 of our high school kids to New York. And for us, it, for people out there, it may not seem like a big deal. But for our children, many of them, that's their first time in an airplane, their first time leaving the reserve. And they, for, a, for just the brief time, they get to see what the world is like out there. And they get to get a break from the realities of back home. But we have to always remember that we, as Indigenous people, we are very resilient. In spite of all the traumas, we're still here. We're teaching our Blackfoot language to our children. And as, as Charlton mentioned, we have elders in our midst, elders in our school. We're so rich. Our elders say, Gana never had to borrow. Uh, we were one of the few indigenous peoples, tribes in this land called Canada that never ever lost our traditional ceremonies. So we're very, we're still a very strong nation. And that's what we're trying to teach to our children so that we can empower them. I'm going to share with you a song. And this song is called the, the Woman's Warrior Song. I was able to travel to, um, uh, well actually I did my graduate uh, PhD work at UBC in, in Vancouver and I sat in a, in a lodge, a sweat lodge with women and they gave me the rights to sing this song. And the song is to honor all women. So this song is for the women here that are sitting here in this, this audience. The song is for those of you who are not women to think about your mothers, your daughters, your granddaughters, whether they're still on this earth or in the spirit world, like my daughter is, and my mother, I sing for, I'll sing for you. And um, I think that I'm just, I just feel like the more we teach our children to value things like and our language, to value the land, to value our elders' teachings and stories, to value the ceremonies. If we could, if we could give that to our children, that's what's gonna make them strong, and that's what's gonna keep us going. So I will sing the Women's Warrior Song. Thank you.